This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 204. Mailbag, question number one, by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily. Happy Thursday. This is where I act as your narrator and read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs out there. I think I'm due for providing another inspirational quote to you all, so here we go. This one comes from the great Mark Twain. Quote, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. The secret of getting started is breaking your complex, overwhelming tasks into small, manageable tasks and then starting on that first one, end quote. I just love that quote because for those of you longtime listeners, you know that's essentially the theme of this show. And for those of you that are new, that is essentially the theme of this show. Now, if you wanna keep this show running, please listen all the way through. But for now, let's get this going and start optimizing your life. Mailbag, question number one, by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. Question, we are all bombarded with lose weight quick schemes, but how does a brother gain weight? First of all, thanks for your question. In the fitness world, we tend to lump people into three categories as far as body type is concerned. Ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. Knowing you personally, the somatotype that you were referring to would be the ectomorph. Here's an excerpt from John Berardi's Scrawny to Brawny that helps explain the ectomorph in a nutshell. Quote, the typical ectomorph is a person who exhibits low levels of strength and size prior to training. They're usually tall and thin with relatively low levels of body fat and small, narrow bones. Although their smaller joint structure often serves as an impediment in strength and power sports, they do tend to excel in endurance activities due to what is typically a higher than average proportion of slow twitch muscle fibers. Their fast metabolisms often make it difficult to gain weight of any type when following a more conventional dietary approach, end quote. As for the answer to your question, I hope you have yourself a pair of eaten pants because it's time to eat like you've never eaten before. I've never met a weight gain problem that couldn't be fixed by throwing more food into the mix, but the problem with most ectomorphs is that they simply don't eat enough or don't eat enough consistently. So here are some tips. One, keep a food log. You don't know how much you're eating until you know how much you're eating. When I was trying to put on weight, I had days when I swore I was eating like a horse, but when I checked my log for the day, the truth was I just had a really big breakfast, barely anything in between, and a mediocre dinner. You also don't wanna eat big one day and then fall off hard during the rest of the week, essentially taking one step forward and six steps back. Keeping a record of what you eat will help you in this respect. Two, set a weight goal. The only direction you're concerned with is up. So as long as the scale is constantly moving in that direction, you're golden. I would buy a scale and weigh yourself once a week, shooting for a one to two pound increase a week. Don't weigh yourself every day as it's unnecessary and the body tends to experience fluctuation throughout the course of a day, which can drive a normally sane person mad. Three, don't fear the food eat the food. This is a trap that many skinny people tend to fall into. In their attempts to gain weight, they scale back their food intake because they don't want to get fat. This is like showing up to a 100 meter race in a fat suit because you're worried about hurting yourself if you fall. The main thing you want to do is eat a lot and eat a lot consistently. When your goal is to gain weight, you want to go with foods that are calorically dense, food that contains a lot of calories relative to its size. For example, It would take more than five pounds of broccoli to equal the calories in one Cinnabon cinnamon roll, which weighs less than half a pound. Luckily, there are natural, whole food options to meet this requirement, so you don't have to sacrifice your health for your physique goals. Eggs, milk, cheese, chicken, beef, turkey, pork, fish, yogurt, walnuts, peanut butter, olive oil, almonds, oats, pasta, fruit, the list goes on and on. The main takeaway point here is don't eat like a bird. Veggies are great for health reasons, but they won't put on the size by themselves. Make sure you're including them in your diet, but also make sure to surround them with copious amounts of other food as well. Don't be afraid to treat yourself to the occasional treat either. Four, when in doubt, drink some of your calories. Many former skinny folks swear by drinking a gallon of milk a day on top of their normal meals, and while I wish I had an excuse to drink that much milk, I can see how some might be put off by that idea. However, creating your own tasty calorie-filled shake may be an option for you. 
Five, eat four to five times a day. You're only awake a certain number of hours a day, so you want to get in all the food that you can during your waking hours. However, you don't want to hit yourself with a calorie bomb early in the day only to spend the rest of it in a lethargic slump because you fell into a food coma. Spread the food out over the course of the day and make sure you get in a nice big meal after your training session. Your body will thank you for it. And six, train. You didn't think that you were gonna get away without exercising, did you? While not crucial in the grand scheme of putting on weight, a proper resistance training regimen will ensure you don't end up looking like a heavier, softer version of your former self. Having reviewed the book myself, I feel like John Berardi's Scrawny to Brawny is a great place to start for most people looking to put on size, since it comes with a program specifically aimed at ectomorphs. But there are also many other resources that will help bring you closer to your goal. There's Eric Cressy's Maximum Strength, Robert Dos Remedios's Power Training, and Nate Green's Built for Show. You just listened to the post titled Mailbag, question number one, by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. I like that Roger mentioned to not weigh yourself every day because this could drive you insane. And he's right, our weight does fluctuate throughout the day. A couple of times a week should suffice, but try and weigh yourself at the same time every day. Ideally, right when you get up, maybe after you use the restroom and you have no clothes on. That will probably give you the best estimate of your weight and to allow you to really know whether real changes to your weight are in fact happening. Now, in my experience, when folks try to gain weight, sometimes they overshoot their goal. They get a little bit too used to eating all of these extra calories, and sometimes their activity levels kind of level off. You wanna be careful because let's say you overshoot your goal of attaining your maximum weight. Let's say you go 10 or 15 pounds above what you want it to be. There's a theory that the body now that you hit that high mark, will throughout the rest of your life try and get your body to stay at that high weight. That somehow the body's metabolism switches over and now your body's gonna fight you anytime you go below that maximum weight you achieved. So again, when you're trying to gain weight, be very careful. And again, in my experience, people tend to gain too much fat weight when they try and gain weight. So there is a very fine balance that needs to be achieved. Now, I know Roger mentioned to drink some of your calories and how you can create some tasty shakes in order to increase your calories very, very quickly. I just wanna caution that that might not be for everybody. When we drink our calories, the body doesn't seem to get the same signals that we're full. So what might happen is we drink our liquid calories and then really soon afterwards, we're ready to eat again. So that may put us over that weight goal that we've set for ourselves really, really quickly. So just be careful with that. Now, if you wanna help keep this podcast going, there are a bunch of things you can do, both financial and otherwise. Just come by oldpodcast.com slash support to help us out. You can contribute financially, that's the biggest way to help, but we understand if you can't. You can also share the podcast with someone, that's free. You can join our free mailing list where we give books to random people on the first of every month and lots, lots more. Again, all of those options are listed at oldpodcast.com slash support, and any of those would be a huge help. I thank you in advance. Again, I thank you for listening. I thank you for sharing this show with someone. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you tomorrow back for a Q&A episode where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one, literally, of Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.